great to be back among friends for some fun and some gaming here of baseball history. Uh, two new teams to face off today. Um, let's get right to it and get a preview here of who we drew uh, in this random matchup. And we have, first of all, the 1910 Boston Red Sox from way at the start of the last century. They're a team that was 81 and 72 and led by Patsy Donovan. This is pre-Fenway Park and a long time with small ball days of baseball. But the big star here is Hall of Famer Tris Speaker, who's only 22 but hit 340 and 14 triples and uh, had 183 hits. So he's coming into his own uh, by all means there. And um, some other talent here, Duffy Lewis, Harry Hooper, another uh, all-time great. Uh, on this team, the offense pretty balanced. Jake Stahl and uh, this team actually would do very well in the upcoming years. They they would win the series uh, in, in 1912. So the foundation is there. Um, on the mound is a, is a younger Eddie Sacote, Ray Collins. Uh, you'll see Smokey Joe Wood um, on this team. A little bit past Cy Young, uh, who was there at the early part of the century, but. The Red Sox are a good team, uh, a team that kind of defined the era, a uh, popular team with the Red Army behind them, and uh, a lot of history of the uh, Red Sox in the early 19th century, or I'm sorry, 20th century. Uh, so worth looking at, worth looking up, uh, worth looking into, and uh, we'll have some fun with them in this series. And let's see who they get. They get the 1963 Milwaukee Braves before the Braves moved out to Atlanta. Uh, 84 and 78, another winning team. So we're going to have two winning teams going up against each other. And this team, of course, led by the great Hank Aaron. This was one of Hank's better years, one of maybe his best years. He is in his prime here at 29 years old. He had 121 runs and drove in 130 with a 319 average and slugged uh, 586. And stars like Joe Torre and Eddie Matthews uh, definitely make the Brewers – Brewers, actually the Braves, uh, make the Braves a very formidable team of, of the era. Uh, they're coming off of some great teams in the late 50s. Uh, leading their pitching staff, of course, is 42-year-old Warren Spahn, who's still going strong. He won 23 games, believe it or not, at 42. Uh, pitched 259 innings plus. Uh, so just a, a timeless legend in Warren Spahn. Uh, Denny LeMaster. Uh, also with the low ERA, even though he had some hard luck. Uh, Bob Henley and uh, Bob Shaw, uh, a very good team of their era as well. So I really like the matchup. It's going to be great to see uh, uh, Trish Speaker go up against Tank Aaron here in this kind of matchup that uh, we love to see. And the setting is ready. It's the best of seven. The first uh, games will be held at County Stadium with the um, – Braves slightly the better winning percentage, and they'll have a chance to uh, get out in front before we head out to Boston and actually Huntington Grounds before Fenway Park. But two good teams expected to be competitive. They're very close record-wise, but the air is being different. It should be interesting how things um, come together. So Ray Collins for Boston will get the opening day nod or the opening series day nod, and Bob Henley will oppose him. As uh, we get ready to start this series off and see who can get the better of um, each other. So without further ado, let's head out to County Stadium. So live to the action here at County Stadium. We are... Uh, in the top of the fourth inning with Larry Gardner up there facing Bob Henley. It's a scoreless game. And uh, nobody on, nobody out. So uh, Henley lines this one into the gap, and that'll get down. So it's going to be extra bases for Gardner as Henley lets up the double here. And Gardner gets into second with nobody out. So nice way to start off the inning here for Boston. And Trish Speaker now at the right with the one out. Runner on third. Shift is on, and they get speaker on a call. Third strike. It's a changeup. 
Beaker was fooled on that one. He didn't swing on it. And we're going to move now to the bottom of the fourth with Henry Aaron up there facing Ray Collins. One out and a man on first. And here's a tap for back up the middle. That actually will get through. So Aaron with a single here in the scoreless game. Runners on first and second for Eddie Matthews. Tight arm delivery. Matthews goes deep to right. This will be playable, however. Out there is Hooper. He gets under it, so that'll be the second out of the inning. Go Torrey now up there with two outs. Collins delivers, and Torrey's going to swing through and strike out. So this pitching duel moves forward. The pitcher's doing a heck of a job. We're in the fifth inning with Bill Kerrigan up there for Boston. Man on, and Kerrigan will go whack it into left for a single. Boston again, threatening. Here's Heine Wagner. Nobody out still. And Wagner goes deep here with a liner. Not too deep, actually, because the runners will hold. So it'll be bases loaded here for Boston. And Ray Collins at the dish. Collins, the pitcher, in the spot where he can help his own cause. Let's see how it plays out for him. He hoops this one to center. Coming in hard there. Is the center fielder in the throw at the plate is in time. So May, the center fielder, catches it and nails the lead runner here at the plate to keep the game scoreless. Outstanding defensive play there by Lee May. So Harry Hooper now up here with two outs. Try to make amends. And he goes to the third baseman. Play is made there by Matthews. And the Red Sox fail to score. Bases loaded, nobody out, and they couldn't get it done. And the scoreless game moves forward. None other than Frank Funk on the mound for the Braves here in the seventh, facing Heine Wagner. Man on, one out. And that is inside for ball four. So we're going to have runners on first and second with only one out for Ray Collins again. Collins will put down the bunt this time to try to help his own cause, and he moves the runners along. Now, that's the way you do small ball, uh, as you'd expect from the Red Sox. So there's two outs now, and Larry Gardner with a chance to break the scoreless tie here in the seventh. And he whaps one into right center. That'll get down into the gap. That's going to score two, maybe even three. A three-run double. And Gardner is the hero today for so far for Boston as the scoreless tie is broken. We'll move to the eighth here with Jack Stahl up there facing Bob Shaw. And Stahl will go deep to right center. This one's actually way back there. It hits off the wall. Stahl with a double here with one out. In the eighth inning. We'll move to the bottom of the eighth. Ray Collins still in there. He's facing Dennis Menke. What a performance here by Collins. This is line two right. This will get down and into the corner. So Menke will have a leadoff double here as the home Braves try to get something going. The Wisconsin crowd on their feet. And Frank bowling up there with nobody out. Bowling will take it up the middle. This will get through. Lead runner's going to try to score, and he will. So the Braves get on the board here. It's 3-1. to one. We're now continuing here with Roy McMillan. And McMillan will go pretty deep here. The center fielder out there. Speaker gets there. He's a fabulous fielder, and he gets there in time to make the play. Here's Mac Jones now up there with one out. Jones will strike out. Collins gets him on strike three, and Lee May at the plate with two outs in the three to one game. May will hit this one to left center. Will it drop? It will. So May gets a two out single here as Collins continues. He has to face Hank Aaron, and interesting that they're going to let Collins pitch to him here in a big spot. Two outs, two run game, and the hammer at the plate. This one's tapped the third. It's going to be a really hard play. Throw to first is going to be not in time. 
Aaron hustling. He beats the throw, and the bases are loaded now for Eddie Matthews with two outs here in the eighth. And this is hit deep to right. Coming over is the right fielder to grab it. Hooper is there. And the Red Sox get out of the jam. I thought Matthews hit that better than it went, but it kind of died out there, and the play was made. So we'll go to the ninth. Heine Wagner up there with nobody out. Three to one game. Wagner will hit this one for a single to left field. Gary Hooper at the plate with one out. Hooper goes to right. That'll drop in there. So runners now on first and second, but the Red Sox can't add to their lead. And we'll move now to the bottom of the ninth with Marty McHale up there against Joe Torrey and the two-run lead for Boston. McHale delivers. This is hit to third. Nice scoop there and play. Beautiful play by Engel. One out. Here's Dennis Menke. Menke allied it to short. Another very nice play. Wonderful play there by Wagner. Heine Wagner ends it. Some slick defense by the 1910 Red Sox, and more importantly, some wonderful pitching. And that three-run seventh does the trick. The Red Sox take game one. It was the three-run double by Larry Gardner. That was all the Red Sox would need here. Ray Collins was just wonderful. He pitched eight innings, allowed only one run, struck out five. Bob Headley pitched well in a, in a very tight, well-played ball game, but in the end, Small ball and low scoring tends to go to, for the era of early, of the early days of baseball, and the Red Sox took advantage of that and win game one, three to one. So we'll move now to game two as Smokey Joe Wood will get the start for Boston against Denny Lamaster as the Braves look to rebound after only scoring one run and losing the opener. So here we go, top of the second. We have Bill Kerrigan up there with two men on. Daniel Master pitching. And this is lifted into the gap, into the hole there in right center. It's going to get a run home. First run of the game goes to Boston. Speaker comes home, and Kerrigan, Bill Kerrigan with an RBI double. There you see it. The Red Sox had another in the second, and it's 2-0 as we move to the seventh inning. And big storyline now. We have Smokey Joe Wood pitching a no-hitter here in the seventh inning. He's gone six strong. Lee May at the plate, and Wood is looking to see if he can make some history here and throw the no-hitter. He's been brilliant. Let's see what May can do here in the top of the seventh with Nobody out. And a mistake there by Wood. May puts an end to any no-hitter hopes. The no-hitter goes by the boards as May has a triple. Here to lead off the seventh. That one got too much of the zone. And the Braves finally put a hit on the board. And now the focus goes back on the game. It's a tight one, only two to nothing. And Henry Aaron at the plate. And Aaron, it's a ball four inside, so he's going to get the first. So the tying runs are on now. A big spot as Wood tries to gain back his composure here. Eddie Matthews at the plate. And Matthews will lift this one to the left. We'll see if May tries to score. May does tag. Here's the throw, which is cut off. And the Braves get their first run. They get the uh, sacrifice fly by Matthews. And it's 2-1 to one now with Joe Torrey up there. Wood may be a little bit rattled here after he had the letdown of the triple. Now he's keeping a close eye on Henry Aaron there at first base. And maybe too close of an eye because he walks the second man here as Torrey goes the first. So we have runners on first and second here. And 
Pete Oliver at the plate. Frank Arlanes has come in in relief as Wood seemed to be tiring, you can say, maybe losing some of his control. So the Boston bullpen on here to try to make a difference, but Arlanes can't find the plate either. So three straight walks here. Well, not straight walks, but three walks in the inning have loaded the bases. And now our line is in a big spot here as Glenn Abrilson has come in to pinch hit the lefty. It's a two to one game, only one out. A big spot here for the home side. And here's the delivery infield in. And Arlanis lets up a shot. Gabrielson takes it deep to left. This is going to clear the wall. It's a grand slam for Gabrielson. The pinch hitter with a slam to the opposite field. And this turns the game on its head. Forget the no hitters. Forget even the shutout or the win. It is now 5-2. to two. Aves. And we'll move now to the eighth. So what a turnaround in this ball game. Larry Gardner now at the plate for the Red Sox, who now find themselves behind. And Gardner lines this one to right for a single. Jake Stahl now at the plate. Stahl lifts this one. A towering shot to left. This one has a chance to go. It will. So Jake Stahl answers here in the eighth with a two-run home run for Boston. Stahl got all of that one. He lifted it over 400 feet to left field. A moonshot. And it is now 5-4. to four Is Another change. Bobby Tiefenauer has come in to pitch for the Braves. Clyde Engel at the pitch. Two outs. And Engel goes the other way. So he'll get on base. So the Red Sox have responded very well here in the 8th inning. But they're still down a run. Bill Kerrigan at the plate. Kerrigan will hit it in the hole too short. That's going to be a very tough play, but it is made. McMillan with a nice play there in the hole, jumping off of his feet and preserving the one-run Braves lead. Here's Henry Aaron now, bottom of the eighth. And Aaron lifts this one deep to right. This one will get down. It's going to be extra bases for the hammer. Henry Aaron with a stand-up double to right center. And it is now Joe Torrey up with two men on, nobody out. Aaron representing the tying run. And Torrey lifts this one to right field. It's going to drop. Aaron's going to score. And this game is tied. So the Braves have made it all the way back. Scoring six runs. It's six to four, actually. It's not tied. The lead now belonging to Milwaukee. Here's Harry Hooper up there in the ninth inning with two outs. And Hooper's going to line a single up the middle, so trying to heap, keep hope alive for the Red Sox. We got Hooper on first. Gardner at the plate representing the tying run. And this is lined to center. That's a base hit. So Boston will now bring the winning run to the plate with two outs. Tiefenauer trying to get out of this thing. Buffy Lewis is in a huge spot here. Is he make the difference in what's been a very good ball game? So Lewis strikes out. Tiefenauer gets some swinging, and the Braves come from behind to win game two, six to four. They put five up in the seventh, another one in the eighth. And they are able now to come back in this series and tie it up. One game apiece. Gabrielson with that grand slam in the seventh inning. Smokey Joe Wood saw it all collapse before his eyes. He had a no-hitter going into the seventh, but couldn't get out of there with even a win in the end. Lamaster struck out six and pitched okay, but it was the performance of the Braves late at home as they rebound after they dropped game one. And now this best of seven has turned into a best of five with the series moving to Boston for game three. It's going to be Bob Sadowski for the Braves facing Frank Smith with the series all even.
So we'll move to game three here from Huntington Avenue. This is pre Fenway Park by a couple years. Frank Smith on the mound facing Eddie Matthews. Nobody on, nobody out. And Matthews will line a shot to right field. That's going to be a fair ball. So Matthews will get on to second base with a double here in the second. Trying to see what view works best for us. Stick here, I believe. I guess it's a better overview. Here's Joe Torrey now, top of the second with Matthews on second base. Pickoff play on second base. Runners back. We'll move now to the third, however. Mac Jones is up there with Dowski on first base. And that's going to be a base hit up the middle for the Braves as they start a rally here in the third. Two on for Lee May. Strike and May can't get the job done. He strikes out. That's a strikeout for Smith. And here comes Henry Aaron with two out. Aaron walks again. He's been doing a lot of that this series. He's on first base. Base is loaded. Two outs. For Eddie Matthews, big spot in this ball game. Matthews will hit it to second, however. That should be playable. It is. Gardner with the play. The rally is killed. We move to the fourth. Here come the Braves again. Dean Oliver, the man at the dish, and Oliver will hit it too short. He is made there. Turn for a double play. Twin killing there to end this threat. Scoreless game moves to the fifth as Heine Wagner's up there with one out and a runner on first. And Wagner will line a shot to center. This will be extra bases. It's going to get down there. And a runner coming all the way from first to score. Wagner has a triple. And the Red Sox take the lead in this ball game. One to nothing. Here's Clyde Engel with runners on the corners. Sixth inning now. And then go line this one to left center. That's going to drop in there. It's going to score some more runs here. A two-run double. Boston now has broken things open here with their run in the fifth. And now two runs in the sixth. It's three to nothing. We'll move to the eighth with Lee Mayer up there. That's singled up the middle as the Braves try to recover. Frank Aurelinus back in the game. He's been the option late for the Red Sox. And here's Hank Aaron. And Aaron hits a long shot deep to center. This ball is going to be just off the top of the wall. So Hank Aaron misses a home run by about a foot. And he gets to second base. Let's see if Matthews can do anything. He represents now the tying run here. With only one out, and he will lift a single to right. He'll get one run in. So the Braves coming back after Eddie Matthews follows Aaron's double with an RBI single. We'll move now to the next hitter, who's Joe Torrey, then on the corners. And Torrey takes ball four. He shows a good eye there. And the Braves with the bases loaded here. Marty McHale has come in to relief. Gene Oliver at the plate. And Oliver is going to lift it to center. On the run is Speaker, who makes a wonderful catch on the run, but it will score a, a run from third, but that could have been a lot worse. Great play by Speaker in center field. He is as smooth as they, as they come. Dennis Menke now at the plate. Still has a chance to do damage. Menke hits it too short. Oh, the play's going to go there to second. And Boston holds on, thanks in part to that speaker play in center. To their 3-2 lead. Jake Stahl now at the plate, bottom of the eighth. Stahl will hit this one down the right field line. Speaker's on the bases. He's got great speed. He's going to hit the third. He's going to hold up there, so runners on second and third. Nobody out here in the eighth inning for the Red Sox. 
Fight angle the batter. And Engel's gonna single to left. This will get a run in. So Engel with a big RBI single here in the eighth inning it is now five to two as we move to the ninth. McHale's still in there trying to close the door. Here's McMillan. McMillan will go the other way and single. So a one out hit for McMillan. Here's Henry Aaron. With two on, he represents the tying run, and Aaron comes through again with a single to left. So this will load the bases with two outs. Henry Aaron comes through in the clutch, and it comes down now to this. Eddie Matthews up there, two outs, ninth inning, bases loaded. It's a 5-2 to two game. Can Matthews come through? He can. He hits it to left the other way. That'll score one run. It is now 5-3 as the Braves continue to inch closer. That was a Texas leaguer. And Joe Torre now with the shot. In another crucial spot. And Torre takes ball four. It is now 5-4 as the Braves have put together quite the rally here in the ninth. McHale remains in the game. He's trying to close the door. Gene Oliver at the plate. And he escaped. This is hit back to the mound. McHale will make the play at first. And yes, the Red Sox escape a very scary ninth inning. They actually allow four runs in the eighth and the ninth. But they survive. They pull off the win. Leaving the bases loaded. Frank Smith gets the win going seven plus strong. Clyde Engel went two for three with three RBIs. Eddie Matthews four for five, including a couple of RBIs, but the series is so competitive and so tight coming down to it, every game seems to be coming to the last inning, and this one goes to Boston at home, so the Red Sox of the bygone era have now a 2-1 series lead. Expect more close games in tight situations as we move to game number four. Sam Frock will go for Boston against Tony Clanninger. And it is Boston's chance to break a little bit of a distance in the series and win the third game. Let's see if the Braves can rebound and tie the series. So we'll hit the game four with... Tony Collinger on the mound facing Tris Speaker with two men in scoring position here in the very first inning. And Speaker's going to hit a hot shot back up the middle. Play is made, but it will be an infield hit without a throw as the run scores. Speaker beating it out. And it is one to nothing, Boston. Here's Jake Stahl with one out and a man on third and first. And... This one's lifted to left by Stahl. Duffy Lewis is going to try to score. Here's the throw to the plate, and they got Lewis. Lewis is out as Jones fired a rocket from left field to get him. What an assist by Mac Jones, and that will preserve the one nothing game. Great defensive play. We'll move to the bottom of the second with Bill Kerrigan at the plate. Run around second, and Kerrigan will line this one into the hole. That one gets through. Jones has no play on this one. He actually overran the baseball, and that will allow the run to score. It's 2-0 Boston. Kerrigan with an RBI. We'll move now to the top of the fourth with Eddie Matthews up there against Sam Frock. And Matthews will take ball four with Aaron walking the second in front of him. So a chance here for the Braves with Joe Torrey up there, two on and nobody out. Frank Frock gets him on the fastball. He strikes him out. Torrey is out. Gene Oliver now following up here with a chance, and Oliver is out on strike. So back to back K's here by Frock. And this game will move all the way to the ninth as it's five to nothing now, Boston. Frank boiling up there against Ed Krager. This one's hit to second. Play is made there, and that'll do it. The Boston Red Sox win here on their home field once again. 
And they've now taken a three games to one lead as they shut out Milwaukee. Five to nothing. Frock, the winning pick pitcher, he went six plus and struck out nine. Larry Gardner, two for four with an RBI and two runs scored. And Harry Hooper went two for four uh, in the win. Four errors by the Braves. Ends up to bite them big time, but also their bats were silenced in this one. And right now, the 19-10 Boston Red Sox in complete control. They lead this series 3-1 to one and have one more home game here, hoping to close it out on their home field. Ray Collins is going to face off against Bob Henley. Game five, can the Braves rally? Can they bring it back home? Or will Boston start celebrating here on their home field with an impressive run-through sweep on their home grounds? But let's see what happens. Move into game number five. So action from game five, Mac Jones will lead off here the ball game in the top of the first against Ray Collins. It's all or nothing here for the Braves. They need this one or the series is over. And Jones will hit this one to center. It'll be uh, extra bases for Jones. He'll head into second. Speaker. May have played that ball a little bit better, but he didn't. And Jones now with a two-bagger, but he moves to third with one out. And Henry Aaron at the plate. And Hank Aaron will hit this one to short. The play will be made at first, and the run will score. So the Braves get on the board here first. Bob Headley now the pitcher with two men on here in the bottom of the second. And Bill Kerrigan at the plate. Kerrigan will go the other way. This is lifted to right. Coming in hard is the right fielder. Aaron has it. That's the first out of the inning. Here comes Amy Wagner. Wagner will go back up the middle. That's a play made at second. Relay to first. Won't be made, so they get the force at second. But we'll move along here to the bottom of the third. Harry Hooper at first. Larry Gardner at the plate. Nobody out. And Gardner takes it the other way for a single. So Boston has men on first and second here in the third inning, trailing by one, with Duffy Lewis at the plate. And Lewis will take it to first. There's a turn and a double play. The Braves turn a nice 3-6-3. Runner moves to third and Hooper, and here's Tris Speaker with a chance to tie things up. But they don't give him the chance. Very wisely, they walk him. And Henley's going to face Jake Stahl. And that's a check swing, so that's ball four. And now, Boston has loaded the bases with two outs. Hyde Engel, the man of the moment. And Engel will hit it to short. Play is made there the short way. Benke makes the play, and Milwaukee holds on to their one-run lead here. We move to the fourth inning with Gene Oliver. At the plate, runners in scoring position. He'll take ball four. So with two outs, the bases will be loaded here for the Braves as they try to build on their lead. Dennis Menke facing Ray Collins. And he hits a little dribbler. That's going to be a tough play. No play is going to be made. Menke gets the infield hit. Runner comes around the score. It is now... Three to nothing. As we move a little further down, it's five to two. The Braves in control. We're in the fifth inning as Henry Aaron's at the plate. And Aaron goes deep to left center. That's way back there. And the hammer. Hank Garen hits his first homer of the series. A solo shot over the wall in left. And it's six to two now, Braves. As they look like they're in no mood to have this series finish. It's seven to two. We'll move all the way to the ninth with Clyde Engel facing Ron and there's strike three. Engel goes down and the Braves win this one seven to two. Putting a stranglehold on the game fairly early. That four spot in the fourth inning gave him a five nothing lead and they cruised from there. Hank Aaron with a home run and two RBIs. Eddie Matthews, two for three with two, two 
walks and an RBI and a run. So the streaking Red Sox are stopped right there here in game number five. And the Braves still have all their work cut out for them. They got to win both the games at home to make the comeback complete. But Boston, hoping there won't even be a game seven. So the crucial game six coming up. Smokey Joe Wood takes the mound again for Boston to try to close out the series against Denny LeMaster. It should be exciting. Let's see if some home cooking can continue the momentum for Milwaukee and see if they can even the series. So we'll head out to game number six with Tris Speaker up here in the top of the second inning. And Speaker will line this one deep to right. It's going to get over the head of Hank Aaron out there. Speaker's got the Jets on. He's going to move for third. And, yes, Tris Speaker with a triple here to lead off the second inning. Wonderful play by the speak by Speaker. Showing off his specialty, which are triples, is the all-time leader in that category. Here's Jake Stahl and hopes to give his team the lead. There's a long shot way back there to left. And it is caught by Jones. A wonderful catch in left field. Diving for the ball just before the warning track. Wonderful effort and catch, but it'll still score speaker on the sacrifice fly. And here's Bill Kerrigan now. Same inning with a man on first. And Kerrigan goes the other way again. <clears throat> Aaron, Aaron's on the move. And this is going to be another triple. Kerrigan extends the Boston lead. Two to nothing. A five spot put up by Boston here in the second inning. So they smell blood. And the ball game really now in the hands of Smokey Joe Wood as Dennis Menke is up there with two men on and nobody out. And Menke goes deep to right the other way. This ball is crushed out of County Stadium. 458 feet. Menke brings the Braves back with the shout. It is 5-3. to 6-3 to three now as we move to the top of the third. And Harry Hooper up there with two men on. Two out. And there's a line single to center. Hooper's going to drive in two. And Boston really putting the hammer down here. They are now up 8-3 to three in the third inning. It is 11-3 as we move to the fourth. Boston on the verge of ending this series as Joe Wood faces Gene Oliver here in the fourth. And Oliver goes deep left. This one has some carry. This one's going to go. So Oliver with a solo shot here. It's not going to do very much in the, in the effort to come back as this game is still margin of seven runs. Here's Eddie Matthews now at the plate. Two on for Milwaukee in the fifth. And Matthews will drop this one into right. So bases will be loaded for Joe Torre with a one out. Joe Wood trying to work out of it. This one's hit the third. Play is made at second. Turn to first. And yes, a double play. Joe Wood does exactly that and gets out of it. So Torre hits into a double play and it's... Still 11 to 4. We'll move to the bottom of the sixth with Gene Oliver at the dish. Smokey Joe Wood still on the mound. And Oliver hits another one deep to left. This is going to go home run number two for Oliver to lead off the sixth. So Oliver's in quite a groove, and it is 11 to 5 now. But still a long ways to go, and we'll move all the way to the ninth where. Boston's looking to close out this series. Henry Aaron up there with a man on two outs in a 12 to 5 game. And Aaron swings at a pitch out of the zone to strike out. And the 19 10 Boston Red Sox win this series by banging out 17 hits and 12 runs in this game six victory. Their offense was on point. Oliver two for three with two home runs for the losing side, but Bill Kerrigan went three for five with two RBIs. Dennis Menke uh, also played well on the losing effort. 
but it was the 17 hits for Boston that did the job. Smokey Joe Wood wasn't great, but he got the win. And the series comes to a close as Boston won three out of the first four games, dropped the last one at home, and came back in one game six, 12 to five. Looking at some of the numbers, first for Boston, Larry Gardner had 13 hits, seven RBIs. Harry Hooper hit 407. Tris Speaker 364. Pitching was excellent for the most part for Boston. Sam Frock pitched very well. Ray Collins and Smokey Joe Wood had their moments where they were knocked around, but Boston survived through it. Here we look at some of the numbers on the other side. The offense here, Eddie Matthews hit 476. Joe Torre only 182. And Hank Aaron 375 with that lone home run. The pitching was the issue here for the Braves, as we didn't see 42-year-old Warren Spahn. And we think that might have been the wrong choice here by the Braves. They, they ended up paying for it. The numbers are what they are. Larry Gardner is called the MVP. Gardner, who hit 464 in the series with seven RBIs. You can't argue with that. And in the final scheme of things, it is Boston. A team from the early eras of baseball takes it four games to two. The 1910 Red Sox defeating the 63 Braves. Hope you enjoyed it. It was exciting. I do apologize for my scratchy voice. I am fighting a little bit of a cold, but Baseball never stops, so we have continued here with our historical matchups, and we'll be back with you shortly. Again, the Boston Red Sox of 1910 win this series in six games, and do so with an impressive array of hitting, pitching, and defense. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon.